Developing a product for die casting is similar to any other manufacturing process. However, the die casting process offers distinct product advantages and cost reductions that require a different approach to product development. This die casting product development approach should be applied to new products and when an existing product is being converted from another manufacturing process. When a new design is started, the designer must disassociate the design constraints from the materials and processes traditionally employed. This is the path to the optimum cost-effective results. Three principles are helpful. Think function before traditional form. Performance must be sufficient, not equal. And match material properties to performance specifications. Let's take a look at each of the three principles in more detail. In many cases, form does not reflect function, but is instead determined by the traditional material and process employed. Therefore, it is essential to think of the functions that the component is to perform, and disregard the traditional or previous process form. The small pulleys shown here require the following features, regardless of the manufacturing process used. A V-shaped groove for a belt, it must be assembled onto a shaft with one flat to a specific depth, and it must be secured onto the shaft flat. The screw machine design shown on the left requires that the V-shaped groove, shaft hole, and set screw hole be machined out of one inch diameter steel bar stock. In addition, the set screw hole must be tapped. The die cast design allows the V-shaped groove, shaft hole, and the set screw hole to be as cast, greatly reducing expensive machining. In addition, a flat can be cast in the shaft hole, allowing the die cast pulley to be quickly oriented onto the shaft flat, greatly reducing assembly time. Only one machining operation, tapping the as cast set screw hole, is required on the die cast pulley. Components are often over-designed because the dimensions of structural features are governed by economics or manufacturing constraints rather than design criteria. A die-cast alternative must, of course, be designed to develop properties that clearly meet product standards. It is not necessarily required, however, that a die-casting match the performance of an existing over-designed component. The screw machine steel bar stock design is very heavy in the area around the threaded set screw hole due to the fact that it is machined out of one inch diameter bar stock. The die cast design does not have the restraints of the one inch bar stock, so material can be reduced in the area around the threaded set screw hole. This reduction saves material and speeds solidification of the die casting, increasing production speed. In this application, even with the reduced material, the pulley is more than strong enough to meet the design performance requirements. It should also be noted that the shaft hole goes all the way through the pulley, further reducing material usage. The material properties of steel bar stock are generally higher than the die casting alloys available. However, in this application, even with material volume reductions, the die casting alloy material properties meet and exceed the requirements of the design. For components that do require higher strength, it is recommended to add ribs, gussets, and other strengthening design features before increasing wall thicknesses. While adding ribs and other strengthening features to a design, it is often discovered that die casting alloys can meet performance specifications previously thought to be available only with high strength materials. The following steps will help the designer to assess the optimum material and manufacturing process. The Manufacturing, Economics, and Alternatives section of this site also has information on economic assessment and compares die casting with alternate materials and processes, and is helpful in assessing economic constraints. Begin with a concise, descriptive statement of product objectives. The example die casting designs found throughout this website which illustrate the unusual and innovative as well as the traditional in die casting applications will be helpful. Also documented on this site are the design theories for reducing the application at hand to the optimum form for the product and for die casting. 
The Working Environment section presents a guide to systematic assessment of the working environment, which helps to interpret product constraints in the context of the operating environment. Subsequent information on economic assessment directly compares die casting with alternate materials and processes and is helpful in assessing economic constraints. During the preliminary design phase, it is important to configure the product for the material slash process combination to be employed. Information presented later on die casting and manufacturing criteria offers a comprehensive guide to developing the optimum geometry for die casting. Guidelines on structural criteria, assemblies, finish machining, and surface treatment are useful in this phase of the program. The die caster should be involved in the product development by the time the program reaches the preliminary design phase. In some cases, involvement should begin sooner. Key information will be presented on this website to build a working knowledge of the die casting process as a sound basis for interacting with the die caster. When the preliminary design is complete, it is usually necessary to verify it by finite element analysis or fabricating and testing prototypes. A review of applicable prototyping strategies will assist the designer in developing a strategy that is appropriate to the die casting process and the application under development. It also identifies properties that are and are not evaluated in the selected prototyping process. The procurement and testing of production samples normally completes the product development process. At this point, the prototyping strategy should be reviewed to determine which of the properties of the end product were and were not adequately reviewed during the prototyping phase.